Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Svetlana. I'm currently a postdoc in the Radio Games Lab at New York College. But the work I'm going to talk to you about today, I did during my PhD in Helen Savings Lab at Berkeley College. Um, and just a brief outline of my talk, uh, I will give a background to the biology of the system I studied in, hopefully brief. Um, I'll talk about the challenges we faced in Crab again, during the song of Crab, and then how the chameleon helped us. I'll talk a little bit about the optimization we had to do in terms of concentration, and I'll show you some good results at the end. Um, so, anyone familiar with Helen Sable's work, it won't come as a surprise that I worked on very on very else, which is the chaperone from E. coli. And this is what very looks like. It's a sort of beautiful double ring structure, and each ring has seven subunits, and each subunit has these two, um, these two hydrophobic helices. Uh, colors here in red and orange. And what these essentially allow the to do is to recognize and to find non native proteins, so anything like visceral or partially formal proteins. Um, so, non native soft drinks are right here, and also each, each cell unit is an ATPH, so it also binds ATP. And once this has happened, um, the sort of lid protein proteins come to find the plug, and the non native protein is encapsulated in the uh, Sort of central cavity, which are more cavity. Um, so, yeah, basically, earlier we insist on protein folding by calculating the protein. That's basically the part. And um, just also to talk <coughs> excuse me, a little bit about our sample prep. So, we would start with our protein substrate, which would be unfolded in the urea, another tube with some buffer and a bit of growing out, and we'd essentially dilute. The unformed substrate into the buffer uh, container growing up. When you do this, essentially growing up captures these protein forming intermediates. And then we would put it on the grid and do some again. And I've got two images here one next to stain and one pro AM image. And if you look closely, you can start to see the problem we have. And that's preferred orientation. Classic, as uh, Paul added his uh, pie chart, which showed that I think something like 27% of samples had preferred orientation. Um, and this, this happens with the growing out substrate complexes, but paper growing out is fine. You get end views, you get side views, you get the LP views and everything, but with the growing out substrate complexes, it's just a very strong orientation. Um, and at some point during my PhD, uh, we wanted to study these growing out substrate complexes in the presence of ATP. We wanted to see what happens to growing out, what happens to the substrate when it's sort of carrying out its function when it's hydrolyzing ATP. So, I prepared grids um, on the pitch plot and uh, we collected some data from Diamond. This is just a sort of representative image uh, from that data set. And because we knew we were dealing with preferred orientation, we collected the current data with 35 degree stage tilt to kind of sort of tackle that problem. But when I started processing this data, it wasn't just preferred orientation that we had, we actually had the complex denaturing partially. Uh, you can see the sort of core of the complex is, is like fairly well resolved, but at the extremities it just is garbage. Um, and here you can see it at the higher threshold of the low threshold. And as I said, we have the fermentation still. <coughs> so, nevertheless, I processed this data as best as I could. Starting from this consensus reconstruction of about a million particles or so, um, I used some fancy image processing techniques, including classifications, particle compression, and I managed to identify a subset of about 10,000 particles, so about 1% of the data, which had this, um, this relatively more intact complex. And in this complex, we started to see, uh, just look at the bottom right. We started to see hints of this asymmetric. So one of the growing elements was asymmetric, and we started to take my work this is interesting part of it. So, uh, yeah, um, we have this asymmetric ring, and I just made the orientation as well. Uh, and so we started, we, we, we had two problems. We had the preferred orientation, and we had the partial demetration. So we wanted to use chameleon to address both these problems at the same time. And the main thing we had to optimize was just the sample concentration. So 
we're at sort of standard threat with the vitro block, I would use concentration of the top one right before that. I take things from this and I would get something like this. And if, you, if I were to use that concentration on the medium, I'd have no particles. So my first half of the tries, I approximately triple the concentration and start to see particles in the holes of every one of them. And we froze a couple of periods like this at a few uh, different sort of dispensed ones. Dispensed in one time is essentially the total time between spraying the sun on the grid and the much reason. And we noticed that there was a slight relationship between uh, the time, the, the dispensed of punch time and the public being so for long dispensed of punch time. Um, and in the end, I, I just said, what I'm going to put it on, and I put the 7 micromolar on about 5.6 micromolar, which, yeah, like Paul said, is not the big thing to be And I had, and, and if anything, 7 micromolar was a little bit too high because I held quite a lot of overlapping particles, and I think I ended up discarding like. Six percent of the classification just to have this particles. Um, and uh, the other thing we changed with the sample, right? We were studying Romeo substrate complexes with ATP. I replaced ATP with a non hydrolyzable analog, uh, ADP with chloride. And this did help a little bit with the partial denaturation, but not anything for the presentation, but it at least sort of. I guess stool the content a little bit. Um, so both things in combination helps us quite a bit. So I processed that data set. I think we froze in the end of this data, it was frozen at 54 percent, which I believe is the fastest in the middle of the And then I was skillful during the processing and to show the final construction. So um, this was the, this is the reconstruction of very high the substrate, very high the blue, the substrate is colored green. And you can see the orientation plots inside. And when you sort of take a central slice through the uh, structure, you can see the nomics of substrate and how we have in the central cavity. And the interesting thing here, the asymmetry kind of explains something that we weren't sure about that happened in this model. And when I built the model, it was pretty obvious that the, the gray of subunits were essentially doing one of two things. So four of them were kind of in this sort of, the, the, the helices are kind of in this downward facing position where they're contacting the substrate and essentially preventing them from escaping. And then the other three subunits, and we didn't see any other complications, it was just the four and three. The other three subunits are extended upwards, presumably, so that they can improve the shepherd and the uh, uh, Yeah, and this work I'm currently writing up in the uh, so I will finish there and have time to thank people. Um, so thanks everyone in Heaven's group and I was also supervised by Mustafa and the team of UCL. Um, and all the guys of these staff, especially Natasha, but hopefully it's quite funny, I don't think she's here, but I didn't see her. <laughs> and Shu and Claire and Dave and Michelle at SPT um, and Dan as well. Both of them helped with the community session. Um,
questions? Or some hands at the back? Um, yeah, I was in your mixed stain images, it looked like you also have the third orientation in them as well. Yeah. Um, and, but there's no air water interface in next day, so like, what do you think is True. the driving um, I guess in that case, it's the carbon, because the carbon is hydrophobic, we make it more hydrophobic, we call it discharge, but I assume it's just, because yeah, you're right, you do see the fermentation <coughs> in uh, next day as well as the um, I could only assume it's using carbon, just like sticking to the carbon more um, in an empty one, so. True, yeah. And we see, we still see like particles all over the carbon as well. And I think that's what happened with the concentration. Like, up until a certain critical concentration, the particles are on carbon, and then once you hit that concentration, it's not going to fall. But that's just the way it's going to happen. Alright, thanks a lot.